Hands to the plow. Thank you very much. A lot of work, but we were all blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God has been so good. Ten years. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you do anything for ten years, amen. amen. Especially if it's for Jesus. Amen. It's a reason to celebrate and to thank God. Amen. We should be doing that every day, but this is on a different level. Again, I want to thank everyone that put their hands to the plow, made it happen. How many know that it takes a lot of work? It takes a lot of work. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I want to thank those uh, that are faithful to their tithe, faithful to the building fund, faithful in their giving. May God continue to bless you and your family because God is good. There's, there's no way other than God that we could make this happen. But God uses you and I, people like you and I, simple people. The Bible said that God turned the world right side up amen, with simple men, unteached or untaught men, amen, but they were obedient to God with a purpose and surrendered their life for that purpose. And I want to talk a little bit about that today. Praise the Lord. Uh, but also, uh, I also want to touch on the Harvesters Conference at Praise Chapel in October. I believe the day that we're invited to do the worship, it's a Wednesday, the sixth, what is it, the 16th? But I believe it starts Tuesday. We'll get more information on that. So if you're interested, at least try to make it out there Wednesday, back up the worship team, back up the ministry, and get your praise on for God. It's an exciting time. Mark it on your calendars. Amen. Take the time off or, or leave early from work a couple of hours. You've done it for other things. Amen. But make it a purpose. The Bible said that Daniel purposed on his heart, in his heart, to serve God, to do the things of God, to live for God. We've got to put a lot of other things on the back burner, on the side. Amen. And, 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 and let's live our life for God. Let's make a... a Let's make a, a, a great effort in that. And also, the men of God, November 15th through the 17th. Praise God. I mean, before people used to be excited to go. Now it's like you're, you're happier to sign up for a, a, a Disneyland sign-up sheet at work and pay $200 for one day or $300 or whatever it is. I think now we got to write permission slips to get the men of God just to go anywhere. Amen. If you need to do that, and I can write one out. Praise the Lord. You heard my wife, the women say they got something, and they're off. They're eager to get in the way. Men of God. We're the priests. We're the backbone. Amen. That's where things take place. That's where we relight the fire or the fire begins to burn within our lives. We, we meet other men of God, and iron sharpens iron. It's a, it's a great thing. So please, there's enough time to purpose $100 deposits. They're due. Amen. And let's make it a purpose to do that. And the single men have no excuse. They should already mark that on their calendar and been eager to say, here, there, here's, here's my portion. I want, I want more of God. Amen. So let's get that. Let's get those two things dialed in and uh, praise the Lord. How many are ready for the word of God? Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful day it is today. God is so good. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Genesis. If you don't know where that's at, it's the first book of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Chapter 12. I've touched on this over the years. But how many know that it's generally something that is not profound, that ignites and sparks your life, but it's usually a reminder. It's usually something that you've heard before that God has prepared and now deposited that it's time. It's, it's time to step up and it's time to surrender everything to God and watch God work in your life like 
like never before. And we're going to read a, a little bit about a man who did that. Amen. And this man is like you and I that took a step of faith and God used his life, saw his heart and used his life. No matter the obstacles, we make a lot of excuses and it's time to turn those obstacles into stepping stones in our lives and press forward to the things of God. Genesis chapter 12, verses 4 through 9. Everybody there say amen. So Abraham, that was Abraham before God took the name and gave him a new name of Abraham, but it's Abram, same man. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all, those, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan, verse 6 says, Abram passed, passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Morah. And the Canaanites were in the land. Verse 7 says, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give you this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, whom he had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west of Ai, on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Verse 9 says, So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do with our hearts. Stir our hearts, Lord. Light a fire, God, deep within our souls. We're careful to give you all the praise, Lord, for you deserve the praise and all the honor and the glory is yours, God. We thank you, Father, for what you've done with our lives, what you're doing with our lives, what you start, you will complete, and we trust you, and we walk by faith and not by sight, not by what's going on, but what you say in your word, Lord. Today, lead us, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by the truth of your word, God. We thank you, Lord, and all the saints of God say amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Glory to God. And I titled this message, Walking with God by Faith. How many know it's going to take just that? How many want to please God? Amen. I, I want to please God. But Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, you can still please God? It says, it's impossible to please God without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And the great part is in that he is a rewarder to those who sometimes, to those who diligently seek him. What's your passion? What do you do diligently? What do you like to seek or put all your investment and your time in? God is a rewarder. He has it all. He owns it all. But yet in His Word, He says, if, if, if you seek Me, if you have faith, if you step out, I, I'm, the rewar I'm the rewarder of those who diligently seek Me, that want to be fed, that hearts are open for God, that you come to the place in your life where you've been through so much stuff and nothing, you, you still desire more. It's still not enough. If it's not enough, then it's all bad. It's all wrong. But we got to come to a place in our lives where we say, Lord, I surrender. What I'm doing is I'm spinning my wheels and nothing's working anyway. 
I'm looking for love and hope in all the wrong places. But Lord, today I'm going to find a way. Stir up my heart so I can diligently seek you. I surrender my heart to you. In our lives, we're constantly moving. We, we came out of the, the womb moving. We're always moving. We're always doing different things as toddlers. We, we never stop. My little Dominique, he never stops. Some of you have children, you know, they, they never stop. But we as people, we, we do the same, maybe in a slower pace, but we never stop. We're always moving. We move out of our parents' house. We get our own place. We're always moving. And then we move back in. And so we're, we're always moving and, and, and we're going different places and we're flying and we're packing our bags. And I don't like packing bags because we have to, if we pack it, then we have to unpack it. And I'm always taking what I should have and, I, and what I should take, I don't take. You know how that goes, right? And that's how we are in our lives. But I mentioned back in the text that Abraham bought something or he brought something or someone, as Abraham departed, the, 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 our word says that Abraham, that the Lord spoke to Abraham and he departed and then he took Lot with him. I don't want you to miss that. He called Abraham, but Abraham, I'm sorry, Abram, but Abram took Lot. God didn't call Lot. He called Abram, but Abram took Lot with him. And there's some places God is trying to bring you, and everybody's not invited. Are you with me? If you're going to walk by faith in this walk, in this movement that God has called you, then there's people that you're going to have to leave behind. I feel the Holy Ghost already. There's some people that you're just going to have to cut loose. You're, going to have to, you're just going to have to leave them where they're at. Because God has designed you or destined you to a different purpose. Because right here, Lot is not called to go with Abram. But Abram brings him along because there's some places that want, God wants to take you that everybody can't go. I'm going to let you let that sit in. There may be some friends that you're going to have to unfriend. There may be some people that you're going to have to quit talking to. Cut them loose. You love them and you want to see them make it to heaven, but they're taking you away from your destiny. They're pulling you away from what God has for you. They're bringing you down. Spiritually. Maybe even emotionally. Maybe even physically. So whatever God tells you not to bring, today unpack it. Oh, we should have had a hand of praise for that. But according to 1 Peter chapter 2, we are strangers and pilgrims. We're just passing through this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. I wish I had a Bible reader in the house of God. Abram was the first pilgrim to leave everything behind and to walk by faith. How many know Abraham wasn't even a Jew? He came from Haran. But he's the father of all Jews. Because you're not a Jew outwardly. You're a Jew inwardly. Just because you're circumcised doesn't mean you're in. 
The Bible says circumcision is in the heart. We need that old heart cut out. We need God to take that heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. And Abraham sets the example for us, for us and, how, and shows us how to live in absolute faith. How to walk in faith, in total commitment when the God of God and the King of Kings calls you by name. He steps out in faith. And I want you to see in verses 4 and 5, Abram's obedience to God. It says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Verse 5 says, then Abram took his wife Sari, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people who had they acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan, so that they come to the land of Canaan, it took a while. It took one man, and he had to make a decision to walk by faith. But Abram finally came to a place of obedience to the Lord. How many know if you follow the, the story, it wasn't always obedience. There was a lot taking place. He was, he was like you and I. We had to lie our way out of things. We had to say some things that were not true. But still his heart was for God. Yo, you hear me say that in Romans chapter 7. The apostle Paul says the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I shouldn't be doing that I practice. Not that I do. A lot of us here have made a commitment, say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for the new year. I'm going to do this because you've touched me. I made a commitment I did not keep. I'm going to recommit my life, and I'm going to go forward. And that's what we got to do. Don't ever be ashamed of that. Because that answers the question when you see, well, how come the same people come to the altar? Because you want to get it right. This place here is not a God of, of another chance or a time of another. It's a, a second chance. It's another chance. Because some of us already blew that 77th and a half chance. We got to get it right no matter what it takes. Sometimes when I counsel people, I, the, the best advice I can tell them is whatever it takes to get it right with God. God knows their heart. They alone know their heart. Whatever it takes, get it right. I don't know what everybody is going through specifically. But Abraham stepped out in faith. And he finally came to the place of complete obedience to the Lord. And that's the same place I believe God wants to take us. Total obedience. We hear it all the time up here. I want to do what God wants me to do with my life. So we're not just hearers of the words, but we're doers of the word. And God wants to bring every one of us here today and all those that are listening online to that place of total commitments. 1 Samuel chapter 15, you know it. Verse 22 says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Sacrifice is good. And we all have to sacrifice in our lives to do things in our lives. But the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. To listen to what God says is better than any sacrifice that we could make. Although we have to do the latter also. And all I can say is this, that all sacrifice does is it tries to make up for what obedience has prevented us to do in the first place. You might get that on the way home. But we serve an amazing God. We serve a God that allows us to get it right. Amen.
Not to just act right at church. Right? You know, integrity, you know what integrity is? It's what you do when you're alone. It tells a lot to do with your, of your character. He was called to separate himself from everything and anything that would take away his walk with God. That's no different between what God asks for you and I. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run the race with endurance that is set before us, looking unto us the author and the finisher of our faith. And that's Jesus. Again, if we want to go anywhere where God wants to take us or where God wants to bring us, we have to put on those blinders because there's all kinds of stuff that's reaching out that's trying to pull us in. We have to put on those spiritual blinders and say, God, I'm going to serve you no matter what. No matter what's going on over here to the left or to the right, I'm going to serve you. I know there's a lot of commitments and the things I got to do, but God, I'm going to put you first. No matter what, no matter what comes in. No matter how, how Pastor Mike just said, no matter high and how water, we, we're, we're going we're gonna to serve God. That's what we have to, we have to put. Put our mind set on the things of God. We have to run our race and stay in our lane. I wish I had a witness right there. We also got to stay in our lane. Mind your own business. Don't try to be all things to all men. Don't try to do that. Don't try to be a man pleaser. Woman pleaser. Please God. Don't try to get all the people to love you. It's not how it works. The people who are going to love you are going to love you regardless. And the people that don't love you, they never loved you from the beginning. So. So don't get caught, don't get wrapped up in all that. That's a snare from the enemy. They'll try to take you down with mind, mind control. Put on the helmet of salvation. Serve God, don't miss that. Because you'll never miss what you never had. So Don't try to reach for things that God has... Maybe put a timetable on. Let God do the work. And lay aside every weight, it says. So it suggests, now not every weight is a sin. But sometimes you're going to have to lay aside that weight. Because it's holding you back. And there's some weights that are not sins. But the Bible says that we're going to have to put that aside. Also, because if you're going to run well, you're going to have to run light. You ever try to run with a full stomach? Don't turn out well. You got to be careful with Christians that care more about the stars than about the Bible. You got to be careful with a lot of things. There's a lot of new things going around. It's almost like, wait, are you kidding me? Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. God will take care of us. Verse 5 tells us that when Abraham left to follow God, listen to this. He took all his possessions. 
when he called Matthew and the disciples, they dropped everything. But when he called Abraham, and the Bible says that he took all his possessions. In other words, when God got Abram, God got everything Abram had. Hello, somebody. How many know God owns it all? The Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Move your stuff to the altar. Hello, somebody. Kind of a quick jab, right? But that's what it comes down to. Or a lot of us have to say, move your stuff out of the altar and lay yourself on the altar. And we're going to find out that's what Abram did. That's exactly what he did. The only way to really enjoy the Christian life is a total surrenderance to God. You heard me say it's not how high you jump. It's what you do when your feet hit the ground. That's what the Christian life is all about. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, brethren. Paul says, I beg you, by the mercies of God, that you live your life a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. Which is, that's the least we can do. And do not be conformed to this world. Don't get caught up on what's going around. Because it's going to take you out. God willing, you're able to fight your way through it or the mercy of God pulls you out. Do not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the only thing that's going to renew your mind is the word of God. That's the only thing. Because when you do that, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. You want to know? Separate yourself. Don't conform to what's going on. It's easy to get caught up. Anybody can. Little bit of chatter here. And a lot of footsteps over here. And before you know it, we're way over there when we should be over here. For many church people, the Christian life's hard, it's tedious because they're trying to work out. Their salvation. Not with fear and trembling. They're just trying to, to work it out. You know, you, they can't be around music. They can't be around a lot of people. They always have a, a, a frown on their face. They don't like this or they don't like that. You ever been around anybody like that? It's not what comes out of a man that defiles a man. I mean, it's not what goes into a man. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. It's not what goes into a man that defiles a man. But it's what comes out of a man or a woman that defiles a person. You're not a Christian because you got a long dress on or you don't wear a lot of makeup. That's not, that's not Christianity. That's religion. It's not what you don't do, it's what you do. What lights your fire? 
What excites you? What gets you going? We get caught up in a lot of things. What makes you smile? God's been so good to us that we ought to put on that smile before we come to church. Not just here. And if they don't smile back, just smile anyway. Praise the Lord. Listen, everything up to this point in Abram's life is about getting him to the altar. I said everything to this point is about getting Abram to the altar. He's been through a lot of things. Read your word. Everything's God's calling of him, every blessing, every choice he's made, the, the, the fact that God has chose him, everything to this point is about drawing Abraham or Abram to the altar. And God wants, and all of us, all of us to hear, and everyone watching the service today, to be on that altar of sacrifice. That altar of of praise. Remember, sacrifice is not bad, but the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Praise ought to be sacrifice. Hello, somebody. Giving ought to be sacrificial. Hello, somebody. Living for God is sacrificial. And when we come to the house of God, we ought to give everything that we have and lay it all on the line. Are you giving all your worship to God? Again, I say, are you giving all your worship to God? All your praise, all your love, that's a hard one. I remember when I was younger, I was getting a lot of trouble when I was younger. No, pastor. <laughs> a lot of trouble. And the people that really cared about me, a lot of authority at that time, they would say, you know what, you, you, you have a good mind. But when are you going to use it? What are you saving it for? You got a good voice. What are you saving it for? If God has blessed you, and it's a gift from God, you got good gifts, but what are you saving it for? If God has opened up a door for you and opened up a way, What are you waiting for? To shout when you get to heaven? You gotta have you have a lot of practice here. What are you waiting for? Because if you think if you're gonna shout there, then you might as well start practicing now. Especially when God has been so good to you. You shout and get excited about a lot of other things that are temporary. Very temporary. Very short. 
Obedience is better than sacrifice. And when God got Abram here in the story, he got all Abram had. He got it all. The Bible says that he took all his possessions to follow God. And when God gets all of us, He gets all of us. He gets all we have. Is this hot? If you're not a tither, it's not a money problem. It's a heart problem. It's an issue of, of the heart. If you love the stuff more than the one that gets you the stuff, then it's a heart problem. I wish I could just stay right there, but it's not enough time. But I want to move to Abram's obedience, to Abram's opportunities. It's right here in the text. Let's look at the obstacles that Abram faced through the journey with God. He's obedient. He's, he's following God. He's taking the people. And there's some opportunities that are available to Abram as we read the text. But before he can reach the opportunity, how many know we have to face opposition? Whenever God has opened a door, Paul says a door was open, but... There was adversity. Anytime God opens a door, open up a door, say, oh, God, open up a door, open up a door. You're going to have adversity. There's going, to be an, there's going to be an adverse situation in your life. Or when you say, God, use me. Oh, he's going to use you. Can you drink the cup? We'll never get to the opportunities without opposition in our life. Most of us are going through opposition. Maybe not because of the same situation, and a lot of it has probably self-induced. But opposition comes in our lives because we serve God and God's opening up doors. So in our text, let's look again at verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old. Can you imagine? Can you hear his family saying, Abram? You're 75 years old. What the heck are you doing? Serving God. Coast it, my brother. Take a breather. You're, you're in retirement. You're receiving Social Security. Why are you serving God? Can you imagine? This is before he left. 75 years old. You're talking about following God? The days opposed him because he was 75. Darkness opposes you. Situations happen, but listen, brothers and sisters, you don't serve God just till you're old. It's not the way it works. You don't serve God until you're, till you get sick. We don't plateau. You serve God till you die. Now there comes a day where you'll stop teaching in the children's ministry. There comes a day when you, you'll stop worshiping on the worship team. 
But you won't stop serving God. There comes a time when I'll stop preaching, stop preaching for this church, but I'll never stop serving God. Because you don't serve God until you're sick, until you're old, or, or things happen. It's a call on your life. It's irrevocable. Not because you're just a minister. Because you're a child of the living God. And Abram didn't really start getting blessed until he was about 75. He may be waiting until your last days before he really blesses you. Don't limit God. Take the limits off God. The days opposed them. And then darkness opposed them. Read the text. The Canaanites were in the land where he was Headed to was hostile territory. It was enemy territory. They would suffer great opposition. They were pagan worshipers. They were idolaters. They were vicious people. But in Abraham's walk, he never stopped. He continued, even though he was headed to enemy hostile territory, he never stopped. He continued. He kept on walking by faith to the land, knew nothing about it. I need to tell you that nothing has changed since Abraham's days. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. Those of us who are determined to walk by faith and not by sight. But he soon discovers that the Canaanites are still in the land. Just because you decided to serve God, it's not going to be a smooth sail. Matter of fact, there's going to be great opposition. You decide to make a change for your life for God, there's going to be great opposition. The day you want to fast, they're going to have a potluck at your job the next day. That's just the way it goes. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says that all would live godly life in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're going to be all that God wants you to be, you're going to suffer persecution. You might as well get it in your mind right now that there's going to be Canaanites in the land. You got to get that straight. There's going to be some Canaanites in your family. Hello, somebody. There's going to be some Canaanites in the street, maybe on your street. But don't let him or her stop you from being all that what God wants you to be. We walk by faith and not by sight. Not by what's going on, not what people are saying. Don't get caught up in the mix. Put your eyes on God, the author and the finisher. Lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us or ensnares us. Because it gets us all the time. And we bit again. I fell for the fried ice cream once again. And we got to peel ourselves off the floor. And look up like Nebuchadnezzar and say, you are God. I humble myself 
because you are God. And whatever you say goes. I can't write my own story. It's not over. Don't let anybody write your own story. It's not, it's not over. Because by, the God will prepare a table in front of your enemies. He'll prepare that. Don't worry about what people say or what they do. Don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. Don't let that get under your skin because they got more than what you got. The Bible says they shall all wither like the grass. You ever heard that, that say, easy come, easy go? They got that from the Bible. The tighter you hold money, the, the, the faster it goes. It has wings. If you don't know that, you're going to learn that. But God will protect you. He's got a fence around you. He's got a hedge around your life. The darkness opposed him. The days opposed him in, in the text here. But we know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against rulers of darkness. So it's not him or her. It's a spiritual battle. To Haran, to where he was going in Beersheba, was five, about 500 miles. Can you imagine? That's not very far for us, flying or driving. But can you imagine 500 miles walking with your wife? 75 years old with Lot, his nephews, his brother's son. They got other people, if you read the text, that came along with them. They got to walk 500 miles in a land they know nothing about. Abraham, you sure God called you? Because we're tired. This is a real scene. They brought everything that they owned. Everything. Read it. And they're bringing it with them. And when we get to verse 9, when they pass Bethel, they're still walking. Read verse 9. They're still walking. So many people have started off with us, but they gave up. They start walking, but the journey gets hard. It's hard. The journey gets tedious. The journey gets heavy and they give up. But thank God this afternoon that you're going to keep walking. You're going to keep pressing. You're going to keep trusting God. That's how it works. Stop doing that. See what happens. Do not grow weary of well-doing. Because in due season, you're going to reap a harvest if you, if you faint not. That just doesn't sound good. That's the truth. That's God's word. We can trust Him in that. No matter how hard the journey gets, God will see you to your destination. You can bank on that. And your destination depends on who's driving. Is God driving or is the devil driving? 
Are you stopping off at the club? Or at some other place that you know you shouldn't be at? What am I doing here? Stomach's nodding up? Or was that just me? Who's driving? Jesus, take the wheel? Or? I got it from here, Lord. But if God is driving, you just stay straight. You just stay straight. And you keep on pushing. Because God is in control. It may look dark. The storm may rise. You may be hit hard. But you got to get up. You got to trust God. His word said that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It might come against me. But God's going to take care of it. King David said, I, I've been young. But now I'm old, he said. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or the seed begging for bread. Not only will God take care of you and your children, He'll take care of you and your grandchildren also. We got much invested in this. God is still answering the prayers of the ones that are no longer here. Oh, pastor, how could you say that? Because the Bible said that Abraham didn't even get to see the blessing that the Lord has promised us. The reason that most of us are here is because somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. Somebody prayed that your addiction would be broken. Somebody prayed that you would come back home. Somebody prayed that a door would open for you. Somebody prayed that you'd be sitting here today. Feeding on the word of God. When we didn't have the sense to pray for us ourselves. I know I didn't. They prayed us out of the mess that we got ourselves into. That's how good God is. Don't give up. That's the message. Stay forward. Press on. Walk by faith and not by sight. It may not look good in the beginning, but when God starts, He completes. He's faithful. Don't give up midway through the journey. Don't throw in the towel because God throw it right back at you. That's how it works. The journey's been a long, a, a, a long one, but it's been a good one. The Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. I said the Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Now I want to close with seven and nine. Bible says, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give you this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord. Who had appeared to him and he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed going on still toward the south.
It's about building an altar to the Lord. It's about laying it all down at the altar. After every victory, they built an altar. When God did something in the man or woman of God's life, they built an altar. It's still going on. If you have any idea of what's going on, just look at the Middle East. Look at what's going on. Esau is still trying to take from Jacob. Ishmael still wants what was promised to Jacob. God said, I'm, it's all yours. I'm going to give you this land. But yet the war continues. Sister said, Jesus is coming back soon. And he's coming back. Let's all give the Lord a hand of praise. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Let's get ready for the trumpet. Because one day we're going to hear that trumpet. And some of us are going to either scream for joy. Or we're going to scream and Bible says that we're going to clench our fists to Jesus. Hallelujah. You're here today and you don't know God. You're here today and maybe your walk is not like you want it to be. Your commitment is gone. But you're here today and God has spoken and he said, man, woman of God, I want to lead you in the direction. Holy Spirit says, I want to be your spiritual compass. You're in this place and you don't know the Lord. You're in this place and you want to recommit yourself to God. In the presence of God. Go ahead and put that up, my brother. You want to sit in the presence of God. 